Well, another lovely Wednesday. And today I'm going to be looking a little bit more at how to separate the teaching of pitch and the teaching of rhythm and how that can really help our students. Now, thank you to everybody who said how much they enjoy me coming on and, and talking a bit because I really enjoy it as well. Um, and I know a couple of three weeks ago now I talked about the most important skill you could teach your students. And if you remember, it was all about rhythm. That was the most important skill. Um, and I'm delighted that actually Sharon and I are going to be sharing um, tools and a whole uh, five five sort of systematic approach to how you can teach rhythm really effectively. And I'll put the details in the post below and you can register for the webinar. We'd love to see you there. Um, but as, as part, well, not as part as that, but I've been doing a lot of research into musicianship recently. And really it comes home how important it is to separate out pitch from rhythm teaching, learning to read pitch notation and learning to read rhythm notation. And that's because for some early readers, putting the two things together causes cognitive overload. They can't, if they haven't got them automated, if they don't look at a rhythm and just automatically understand it, then they're struggling with that and they're struggling to read what the notes are, the pitch names and transfer that onto the piano. And that really just slows down the brain hugely and can lead to a lot of tension actually in their playing, which immediately affects the sound. So it, it's all absolutely connected. So I do think it's important if your students are struggling like that, then try separating the reading of rhythm and the reading of pitch and how you're teaching it and that you're expecting them to do one or the other, but not both at the same time, especially in challenging passages. Now, what it really means is that when you're teaching pitch or you're teaching rhythm, you actually have to approach it very systematically. So, for example, I've got some of my pitch cards here again that you saw the other day. And um, these are in particular patterns because our brain loves to read patterns. So if I was looking at this one with the student, for example, um, my, my teaching idea is that it's actually they're reading the steps here. They're reading the patterns. They know that this is what I would call a landmark note or a guide note. So I use a particular set of guide notes, but it's up to you. You can decide, but stick with two or three, probably three certain notes at the very beginning. They would, I would say, what's that note? And it's one they're very familiar with. They might not instantly recognize it. It takes a long time to learn to read um, pitch, actually, and rhythm, notation generally. So they would call that base C as far as I'm concerned. And then I'd say, and does it move by step or by skip? and it moves by step. So I'd ask them to find bass C, and of course it's bass clef, wrong way, bass clef. And then can they play that pattern? Great. Can they say the names of the notes? C, D, E, can they sing them? Okay. Um, could they play it with finger uh, three, two, one? Can they play it with finger five, four, three? Can they play it with, oh, is there a different set of fingers they could do? You know, four, three, two. Get them to come up with a, at least one idea for that. And then I might get them and show them this one. So with this one, okay, what's the first note called? It's bass C again. And are we moving by step or by skip? And if they look carefully, they can see that actually it goes from space to space to space. So it's moving by skip. So how are you going to play that? And I might get them to say fingers five, three, one before playing. And then they play five, three, one. And then, and what are those notes called? C, E and G. It's very systematic in the way that we're doing it. And that's just one example of pitch shapes that they need to know. Now, when it comes to rhythm, rhythm is something that we have to go over and over. And as I said the other day, it is the most important skill, I believe, that you can teach, especially at that um, early stage of learning. By early stage, I'm probably talking for most average children. I would say it's the first two to three years. I think it takes at least three years to become moderately fluent and reliable as readers. Yes, that long. Um, so, 
here's one idea and this is literally hot off the press our lovely uh, graphic designer una casey thank you una has sent this through to me about 10 minutes ago and this is something we're going to be giving away actually to all live attendees who come to our webinar tomorrow so as i say do do sign up in the in the link below do get and register and um this is what's called a rhythm clock and i've used rhythm clocks for a long time but i'm this is the very first one we've had for curious piano teachers and yes to members it will be appearing in the um in the on the website in the resources section so the rhythm clock as you can see it's got a clock with lots of numbers on it and then it has a whole set of fairly elementary level rhythm cards yeah some of them are repeated most of them aren't and there's all sorts of games you can play actually um it's not my idea i got this very much from somebody else via the voices foundation etc etc but one thing you can do is go round the clock setting up a steady beat getting them to tap tap and say so we'd go ta 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 tick tick ta tick 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 ta ta and you go round each one in time I'll be sharing a few more ideas for how you can use that rhythm clock in really creative ways but you can see there are numbers there as well so just think maths and how useful that might be as well so there's a couple of of, of ideas for how we can separate out the teaching of pitch from teaching of rhythm it doesn't have to be serious it could be fun can be really light-hearted but what it helps our students to do is overcome that cognitive overload where everything feels so heavy so it's our birthday week we are nine on friday i'm very excited about that and i'm going to be going live actually over on youtube if you haven't uh, been over to our youtube channel i'm going to go live over there and i'm going to be uh, looking at some musicianship ideas for how to approach a chopin mazurka i think i'm doing that at 11 30 so if you can join me then on friday i'd love to see you then okay or it might be 12 30 actually I'm, i can't remember off the top of my head up will the time down below all right thank you all so much for watching happy teaching i've had a fabulous morning and i'm hoping to have a fabulous afternoon as well okay bye for now